Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with another Bible journaling process using the Heart Layers devotional kit from Illustrative Faith. And today I'm working on the second section of the devotional, and right after, this is the promise, and right after the devotional page, there is this beautiful prayer that Angie wrote in here. It's a prayer in the valley, and uh, I'm going to do a lot of my journaling in this notebook like I have been for the other uh, entries, a lot of my kind of prayers and just fleshing things out are happening in that notebook, but I did want to do an entry today in my Bible. And so what I've done, I've done some prep off camera, but I picked a few elements that I want to use from the kit, but I have the prayer here that I went ahead and typed out using my We Are Memory Keepers typewriter. And I have a large um, Project Life journaling card that I picked out. And what I did when I put together this kit, I went through my Project Life cards. I'm really trying to be intentional about using these up and picked a handful of them that match the kit and put them in the box that I have all of these supplies with. That way I can just go through, pick them out and use them. And they're right there, you know, where I can use them easily. And so I picked this one here and um, the backside's pretty much gonna be covered up with the first part of the prayer. And I'm gonna do like a little like tip up situation here with that huge prayer. I just thought it was really, really beautiful and wanted to include that next to this passage in Mark 5 where we're seeing um, Jesus heals a girl and then also the bleeding woman he heals here in this passage. And so, uh, yes, if you are doing the digital version, you could just print out this prayer and it's good to go. But um, there was just something about typing it out because you're having to pay attention to each letter that you're typing really just commits this prayer to my heart. I just felt like it was not as simple as just reading it and printing it. It was really like laboriously going over each word in the prayer, really made it stick. and was just kind of a sweet few minutes that I got to spend with that prayer. So I'm going to create a little tip up feature here with that prayer. I'm going to do just some simple ink smushing in the background with some distress oxide inks and a little bit of gold ink. I thought the gold would be kind of fun to have a pop of that. Um, and then I'm going to be doing, um, with that note, with the gold, some gold foiling with these new freestyle uh, foil quill pens from We Are Memory Keepers. I have a review of these on my channel. I'll link it down below. I also have a process video over at scrapbook.com that I did with these, and I haven't really shown them much more than that on my channel. So I'm going to show you just a very simple way to use them today, I'm just adding a little bit of foil. And it's really, really easy to incorporate this into your Bible journaling. I just use a, a like a battery pack and um, that way I'm not having to search for an outlet and it is USB and so this I just set up and let it get start getting hot while I'm organizing all of my other products and then it's just ready to go wherever I want to add foiling as I'm working and so I really found it pretty easy to seamlessly mush this into my Bible journaling process so let me go ahead and put you on fast forward and we'll put this easy uh, entry together. Okay, so we're gonna start with the ink smushing. So I have a little piece of plastic packaging there. I'm just gonna smush out some of the ink onto that plastic. I add some water. I also like to add water to the page directly just so that I don't get any harsh lines when I smush this down. And then you just smush it. I've shown this technique a thousand times on my channel. It's super, super easy. It is one of the simplest ways to get a kind of abstract looking like background without a lot of fuss and a lot of work. So one of the tricks is to make sure that you dry in between your colors. That way they layer rather than just becoming a big muddy mixed up mess. So that's what I did. I layered it, um, some milled lavender down, I dried it, and then I put some tattered rose over the top of that. Most of this will be covered by that journaling card, but when you lift up the card, you'll be able to see all of this underneath. Now this is some gold acrylic ink from Amsterdam. These are super, super pigmented. So I barely put any on the plastic. I'm just wanting like a hint of shimmer on this page. I don't want it to be a lot and they're kind of, they take a long time to dry. So I just add a little bit, sprayed water, smushed that down, same thing, and it's good to go. So I'm gonna start assembling my little card there. I'm trying to work it out and remember that I want it to be when it flips up, the journaling that's on the back of the card will be right side facing, if that makes sense. So I don't have to turn my Bible upside down to read the text. I have done that way too many times when doing tip in. So I'm just trying to make sure that I get it all lined up the way that I want it. And then for the second page, it's just typed out on regular copy paper. 
I'm adding a little bit of double-sided adhesive to the top, and then I'm gonna adhere this down to the top of the page. Now, these cards are four by six, which is just slightly wider than the margin of the illustrating Bible, and I didn't wanna cover up text, so by doing it this way, all of the adhesive is up towards the top of the page, so I can flip everything up and still be able to see all of the Bible text, if that makes sense. And so I'll adhere that down here in just a second, but I'm gonna work on adding all of the pieces to the card first. So I took uh, a few of those hearts from the kit and layered them up and then just ran them through my sewing machine right down the center and that way they're all adhered together and with the vellum piece you don't have any like adhesive or anything like that poking through and this way you can kind of fluff up the edges and kind of get a three-dimensional look with those hearts and that's going to kind of hang off the edge of the card and then those trees are from the sticker sheet but I actually cut it away from the sticker sheet with the backing still attached that way I could kind of play with it and position it and try to figure out where I want it um, rather than you know peeling it off the sticker sheet and then having to like commit to something. So it allows me some playroom. And then this little strip here is actually the black and white spotty dot pattern that's on the bottom of the sticker sheet. So I just cut it and used it just like washi tape to layer up with those little trees there. So I'm just trying to keep it pretty simple. It doesn't take very much to embellish these cards. These cards usually have um, sayings on them or a little like printed faux washi strips like all kind of details so it doesn't really take very much to add to it and um, this one has like a little label right in the center so I took the promise sticker and stuck that right down and now I'm going to work on the little bottom corner here. So this is where I'm going to stamp that great is your faithfulness, or actually I'm going to gold foil that great is your faithfulness stamp. But I wanted to layer another heart behind that. So I've gone ahead and pulled out some gray Distress Oxide ink. Uh, it's not quite, what is this? Is this hickory smoke? It's not quite the right gray. It kind of matches the gray that's in the cards but not quite the gray that's in those trees so uh, I did go ahead and pull out a white gel pen and added some little cross details just to kind of break up the solid color of that stamping um, and just kind of tie it in with the hearts that are already on that card there. So here we're gonna do the foiling. So I'm kind of measuring out my foil. Now, if you want details on all of this, make sure you check out that in-depth review video. It's very long, but I go in detail how to do all the different steps for this. And so I'm not gonna slow it down or do anything like that. You can just check out that other video. So this is a, a heat reactive uh, foil transfer that's from We Are Memory Keepers. So you do need to use the We Are Memory Keepers foils. And I just cut a piece that's the size of that stamp. I'm gonna go right ahead and adhere this down with some tape. One of the tricks to this foiling technique is to make sure that your foil is as tight as you can possibly get it. Um, mine wasn't as tight as it probably should have been, but that's okay. They also sell uh, magnetic mats that you could use if you don't wanna fuss with the tape, so I will link all that down below if you're curious about that. So I'm gonna stamp uh, on the top of the foil with some stays on ink, and this is just to give me a guide to trace. Um, but because I'm stamping on a slick surface like that foil, you do wanna use stays on or archival ink. Uh, stays on, I have found dries a little bit faster than the archival ink, so I've kind of switched to using that. But that's gonna be my guide, so now I can take my foil quill pen, this is the standard tip size, and I'm just going to trace that stamping. Now this video has been sped up about three times, um, so this is three times as fast as I actually trace over it, and I have found it's much easier to start from the right-hand side of your image or your lettering and go to the left. So backwards from how you typically write, that way you can kind of see what you're tracing as you trace it because you want to be very slow, very deliberate, um, and that way you get the best transfer possible. So here you can see I can lift that up and it's just got this awesome uh, foil detail at the bottom of the page. It almost looks like it's been letter pressed into the page. It's amazing. I'm gonna take the little cross stamp from the stamp set and that same gray ink and just add some cross detail around that at the bottom there. And then since this is a large passage in Mark chapter five, rather than highlight it, I'm just going to take a pen and create kind of a messy little box around it. Anytime that I have like a chunk of scriptures, more than just one or two, I usually do this technique. That way I don't have just a giant block of color right in the center of my page if I was to highlight it. 
So now we can attach the card down. So I'm just taking some grid washi and applying a little bit of that to the top. And then I open this up and reinforce it in the inside here as well. So now I have that tip up mechanism with that card. So I'm just flipping through and looking at the stickers and I'm gonna work on the tab here. And the colors aren't exact with that tab because I went off of that pink heart that was a little bit more of like a dusty rose pink. And so that was kind of the inspiration for the colors for this page. I did go ahead and cut some more of that spotty dot pattern off of the sticker sheet. This poor sticker sheet's gonna be decimated by the time that I'm done with it, but that's okay. Use up every little bit on there. So I'm gonna use that as if it's washi tape. Use the layering heart washies that came in the kit and add a couple of those. Um, I'll add some more on the card as well, just to kind of sprinkle hearts all over the place. Um, just trying to fill in some things. I always feel like this pages like these are just too simple to do a video on. So I always end up feeling like I need to add more to it and continue to add more to it to make it worth having a video for. So that's kind of what happens with a little bit of this. So I did pull out the Today is the Date. This is a new stamp set from Illustrated Faith. And I've loaded up September 2019 on the stamp block. And I'm just going to leave it. So rather than doing the day, I'm just going to do the month and the year. And I'm going to leave it on the stamp block. And so it's ready to go on my desk every time I'm doing an entry through September. And there is... A look at the finished page. That's it. Nice and simple. I have room underneath here or if I want to come back and do some of my own personal journaling, I can and it's kind of hidden behind that tip up feature. But that is going to finish the page. And when I flip this over, uh, you can see that foiling there. Love how that looks. And then when I flip it over on the back, you'll see there's a little bit of bleed through from the ink, a little bit of shadowing, but not anything horrible, not anything that I can't um, cover up and no bleed through from the foiling, which is amazing. So there's a look at the finished entry. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I mentioned. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.